everyone. Welcome to InThisCornerTV.com, sponsored by Tecate, Cerveza Con Caracter. I'm Smitty at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, site of Saturday night's showdown featuring the youngster, Amir Khan, against the veteran, Zab Judah. Should be fireworks. We caught up with both fighters and their trainers, Freddie Roach and Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker. Zab, first off, let's talk about the, uh, the changes in your life and your career. Um, yeah, the change is great, you know, uh, I just, you know, I surrendered to God, I gave my life to God, and, uh, everything's been great, you know what I'm saying, uh, it's been beautiful. Been, uh, uh, also some changes in, in your corner, why the switch from your dad to Purnell? Um, like I said, it's, it, you know, you know, uh, Purnell Whitaker, people don't understand, I've been with Purnell Whitaker since I was the age of 15 years old, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've, uh, I've, you know, I've had the opportunity of sharing the ring with him, uh, my professional debut, and uh, I fought on the co-main event of Pernell Whitaker, and um, you know, I've been with him every, ever since, and uh, you know, now, you know, he, he was a brilliant fighter, he was a master defensive fighter, he was a pound for pound one of the greatest fighters of our, of our era today, and um, now, you know, I, you know, I've chosen for him to uh, work my corner. Pernell, what's it been like uh, working with, with Zab Judah? It's been an absolute pleasure for me because I know Zab very well. You know, I've known him since he was 15 years old. You know, uh, he's been around me most of not all of his amateur career so you know he's he's mimicked me he's followed me you know i've Woo! i've worked Woo! with him i've taught him a couple things back then you know i thought he was one of the best amateur fighters in the world so but now that i get this opportunity to uh to get him back on center stage you know Absolutely, it's made me a pleasure working with him, winning a world title as a trainer. You know, so now I get to, I get, to, I can say that I've been a world champion as a fighter, and a world champion as a trainer. You know, it seems to me that he appears so relaxed in there, and I think that's something that you brought some other changes in his life. But he's so relaxed in there; he seems to be seeing things more than he did when he was a younger fighter. Would you agree with that? I agree. I totally agree because I think you know now he's more he's. He's having more fun, you know, he's more relaxed now, you know. It's not always you got to go out there and try to knock somebody out because, you know, you're not a gorilla. You're a 140-pound junior welterweight boxer. Your, the name of the sport is called boxing. The name of the sport is not called going there, try to be a gorilla, try to knock somebody out. If you don't knock him out, what happens? Then he gets you. So... I just, you know, I just came in and I, you know, he knows me. He know I'm going to play around. You know, I love the sport, so I'm not going to let nobody play play with the sport. Plus, I got an image also. So, you know, my image is uh, people know that that's not my style. You know, that's my uh, man. I'm a boxer. That's my man. So, you know, the name of the sport is boxer. He got finesse, speed, and power. He has all three of those things, and all he got to do is combine all three of them together and let them work for each other, and it'll happen for him. You know, it's funny, when I first saw you back in, in 1996, I said, yeah. this, this kid looks like Pernell Whitaker yeah. power. Yeah, yeah, So there's yeah. a lot of similarities. There. Yeah, yeah. You know, the fight with M Mabuza had to be one of the highlights of your career. Obviously, you faced better opposition, but so many people counted you out at so many times during your career. Uh, how did it feel to once again be world champion? Well, you know what? This is one of my messages, and, you know, a long time ago, somebody from Brooklyn named me the comeback kid, you know, and, uh, you know, my message to the world, to children, to adults, to everybody is uh, never let man count you out. Never let nobody tell you that it's over because it's only over when God says it's over, you know, and uh, like I said, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ and uh, I told him, uh, if you can fix me, you can have me. And uh, he's done a great job with me and um, I thank him, you know, uh, you know, all, all, all praises due to him and uh, I'm just feeling great. I mean, I mean, I surrendered to the king, and now, hey, 
I'm rolling with the king. They want to know what you're going to do next week, man, on your fight time. I feel great. Um, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm ready, I'm well prepared, and uh, I'm just excited for the opportunity. The opportunity. <laughs> it's all good. You see that? The opportunity. But he winked at me. Let's talk about Amir Khan, this training camp. But for one of the things I noticed yesterday in watching uh, uh, Eddie Mustafa was here watching you, know, Hasim Rockman, Nonito Denaire. Uh, it Mike Tyson. Feel, Mike Tyson's been over here. It must feel great to have these guys over here watching you prepare for this big fight. Yeah, well, you know, th these are my friends, uh, you know, before boxing, after boxing. Win, lose, draw, and uh, and uh, you know we support each other, and uh, just it's just a good feeling. I mean, you know, say so they see the change in myself, you know, I see the change in myself, and you know, I just think I just thank God every day for it, and um, I'm just prepared 100% mentally and physically for this fight, you know, and um, I I think July 23rd you will get the best Zab Judy that you guys have been looking for for years to come. Let's talk about this fight specifically. He's a little bit taller than you. He's obviously a lot younger. He's taller. The reach, you actually have him he's, he's, in reach. Yeah, he's one inch taller than me. That's it. Right, right. Yeah. But he doesn't have the experience, and he hasn't been tested. What is your game plan? Well, Amir listens to these interviews with us, so tell him what's going to happen. No, well, you know what? It's not about me to tell Amir Khan what's going to happen to him. You know, Amir Khan is a young fighter. You know, I have respect for him as a fighter. You know what I'm saying? I have respect for every fighter that steps inside of a square ring. It takes a different kind of heart as a person to step between ropes and, and, and defend yourself, you know what I mean? Um, you know, him being a young kid and being from Britain and, uh, and, 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 you know, I understand the pressures and the weights that's on his shoulder, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, like I said, I wish him the best, you know what I'm saying? Come July 23rd, I'm destined for something, and then, you know, I would not be short shortage of it. You know, America is young. He has the opportunity to come back and uh, do it all again. And, uh, you know, I wish him much success and the best. As far as your, your game plan, I expect, in my own opinion, to see a, a very aggressive uh, Zab Judah. Uh, you have tremendous power in that straight left. I love your right hook. Uh, 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 cutting off the ring against him, is that something that's going to be important in this fight? Because he likes to move. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, as a boxer, you know, you're, you're always taught that uh, if a person moves a lot, you cut the ring off and, you know, don't follow him. Cut the ring off and, uh, you know, you know, and working with Pernod Whitaker, he always teach you going behind great defense. You know what I'm saying? Once you're going behind great defense, offense follows. So, you know, like I said, we have a great a great game plan for American. You know, we know he's fast. He has fast hands, fast feet. He has good power. And uh, I know he's hunger. He's anxious to uh, be in this position. And, you know, he wants to win to show the world that he is good. You know, I understand he's getting a little bit bigger now for the weight class. And, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, I just wish him well. All right. Well, look into that camera, though, and tell your fans what they can expect July 23rd against Amir Khan at Mandalay Bay. Um, hi, this is Zab Judah. Um, July 23rd against Amir Khan at Mandalay Bay, you can expect a, a sensational, dynamic uh, explosion. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, the title is, is titled... Attack and conquer, but you know, I think you'll witness a little bit of brains. And uh, and uh, you know, I think uh, I've grown up, American is gonna grow up come that night. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure he'll come in there and he'll uh, you know, witness, you know, he'll learn a lot from this situation. I'll learn a lot from his situation, and you know, I just pray that God blesses both both fighters to to leave the ring the same way that we came in. That's it. Well, best of luck and continued uh, success. And after this fight, unfortunately, you gotta you gotta get in the ring with me. Oh man, well, I'm gonna retire now. <laughs> Amir, tell us about training camp in preparation for Zab Judah on Saturday night. Uh, training camp's going really, really well. Ten weeks in LA, no traveling at all. I was just based in LA, training hard at the Wild Card Gym with Freddie Roach and Alex Ariza as well. Um, and now we're here in Vegas. Uh, ready to, you know, doing all the hard training. I mean, it's all about keeping loose and keeping, keeping, uh, keeping the game plan fresh in the mind. Um, Zabu is very awkward. We know he's very dangerous and everything, but we have to just be one step ahead of him every time. We can't make any mistakes because he's a veteran in the game, very experienced, um, five-time world champion. That says it all. Um, and just picked up another world title, 140 pounds, which I think is a better weight for him. Um, and we have a unification fight on Saturday, so you know I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a, it's going to be a very explosive fight. We got two big names, and um, I think from the from, from a great win I had against Maidana in the Manly Bay, I think it's going to be another one now. Hopefully against Judah to get his name on my record will be amazing.
I think the key to this fight, in my opinion, is your jab and your movement. That's right, yeah, that's what me and Freddie have been working on, the jab, the movement, and uh, just being smart, really. You know, not making any mistakes, not jumping in to any, um, not getting too excited because sometimes Zab does get, he does blow himself out, he does get a bit tired and uh, we just have to be very careful. We just don't want to jump onto any of his big shots. Is this the most dangerous fight uh, in Amir's career in your opinion? Uh, I won't say the most dangerous, but he, 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 he does have experience. He sets traps well and so forth, but he's very predictable, I think. He sets the traps the same way for a long time. I know he's making some change with his new trainer, Pernell Whitaker, and I think they're probably going to box this a little bit more, knowing P Pernell's performances in the, in the past. But um, overall, I think once he gets hit, he's going to revert back to, back, back to what he is, he truly is. I, I, yeah, you're one of the best, if not the best, strategists in the game. I pride myself as being pretty good. I would think the strategy would be you have the younger, quicker, faster, longer guy. I would think jab, move, and uh, and make him uh, expose his age. Exactly, but the thing is, Zab is not the type of guy that's going to come to you. So we, we, we could... We... We've been working on that strategy, of course, but Zab, in case he doesn't want to be engaged and so forth and wants to move, we have an answer for that. And we know when he sets traps, when he goes to the ropes, puts himself in the corners and so forth, gives it, gives these young guys a little confidence and they walk into the big left hand. We're not going to fall for that. And uh, we, have a, we have a great game plan. And uh, uh, we always fight at a high, high pace, and he better be ready for three minutes, 12 three-minute rounds the whole way. I remember talking to you about Manny when he was about that age and you really worked on the balance in the right hand. What are the things you're trying to really work on to make Amir one of the best fighters in the world? Well, balance mostly. Sometimes he comes over with, 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 with the back foot when he reaches with the right hand a little bit. And, we, you know, we're not perfect yet, but he's getting closer and closer to it. I just don't want him to go in recklessly and be a little more settled and set the, punch, set, set the combinations up a little bit better. Prediction for Saturday night. We will knock this guy out. Do you consider Zab perhaps the most dangerous opponent you've ever faced? No, not really. I think um, Maidana probably was more dangerous with the punching power he had and uh, the record he came into the fight with. Whereas uh, Zab, I really think that he um, a good clean shot will put him away, uh, put him down, um, and uh, I know I can dishearten him, frustrate him in the fight. Uh, and and also, you know, he's uh, you know, I think he's all, he's getting on a bit a little bit. He's getting a little bit older now, so I think uh, his body ain't going to be the same as mine. Um, I've got a youth behind me that's going to keep me going from the first round to the 12th round. You're the man in the U.K. now with Hatton retired and David Hay very unimpressive against Klitschko. You're the man. Well, you know, I mean, uh, they're both good friends of mine. David Hay, unfortunately, just didn't uh, win against uh, Klitschko. And then you got uh, Ricky Hatton, which I think is a wise decision that he's made, which is to retire. Um, but, yeah, they've got me as number one now, pound for pound. You've also got Carl Fudge, who's another great fighter from England. Um... But, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's just one of them things. I mean, I'm, I, I just do my job. I just train hard, work hard, and it just pays off. Prediction on Saturday night? Prediction is, um, you know, I never go in there trying to go look for a knockout, but I think uh, a knockout will come in the fight. Uh, it might not be early. It could be early. You just don't know. If I catch him clean, I think he will go. Um, I really think it, it, might not, it won't go the full distance. If it does go the full distance, it'll be a unanimous decision my, my way. Or I'll win by a knockout. So you heard from both the fighters and their trainers. I think it's going to be one hell of a showdown on Saturday night. You got, again, the, the veteran in Zab Judah, who appears to have reinvented himself uh, a new uh, trainer, a new religion, and a new attitude, and a calmer Zab Judah, which I think will make for a more dangerous Zab Judah. For Amir Khan, I think this is going to be the toughest fight of his career, because I think Zab Judah quite honestly, is a much better fighter than Marcos Maidana. When all is said and done, though, if Amir fights the right kind of fight, utilizing his left jab and his height and his maneuverability and his youth, I think he should win the fight. But it will be dangerous the entire 12 rounds or less. Stay tuned for post-fight coverage. For InThisCornerTV.com, I'm Smitty.